Hello everyone and welcome back to Endzone. We are still uh, playing the tutorial game and we are doing fine but it's no wonder it's just the tutorial. It is a pretty good game I think. At least it has potential. It is complicated enough and we haven't explored uh, everything yet. So let's go right into it. And we have to build a medical facility. Is there any healthcare community? Ah, medical facility. This is a big one. Hmm. Okay, let's put it near the uh, the cemetery. It needs a lot of things. I think we have almost everything. Yes, we have enough. Ooh, okay, we have everything. What's that? That's knowledge. Okay. Rich food. I wonder when the streets uh, come into play. You know what, guys? Uh, I think we will need more room. We kind of need this forest. But we don't really need this one. And we can continue to build here. So... Where was... Here. Tasks. Gather wood and... Put another one here. Gather the scrap. Essentially I want to clear this region. Yeah, and it is auto-assigned workforce. Okay. Now we can go. I wonder if they are bringing uh, the collected scrap or wood into this. Let's uh, follow the woodcutters. Yeah, they are bringing the wood here and they are moving the wood. into here okay so that's a thing whoa we have a lot of things here Okay, we have the medical facility. We have to produce medicine. And we have uh, herbs. Does it mean at some point, yeah, we can uh, wind turbine, solar collector, battery, 
electric wall so we can build an uh, electrical network with this step we have ensured the survival of the settlement for a while very good work since more and more children are being born these days we should start to plan for the long term okay while cabins are a good way to get settlers to start a family they only provide limited space this can quickly lead to people having to live on the street. Allow me to suggest to you that cabins be provided only in a very targeted manner in order to control the population growth of your settlement. Nothing is worse than not having enough resources to provide for everyone. We ought to build a shelter to be able to provide other inhabitants with a roof over their heads too. Okay, so... If you are building a shelter, okay, so the shelters just housing people, and the cabins are producing people. and uh, considering what we are built here so far and how big is the map well i don't know what that suggests but we can we can move quite a bit around and i think it's it's uh, like like surviving uh, surviving more size and if you ha uh, want to build a good city something like a good settlement we have to plan that out but we can build directly uh, onto the yeah we can do that okay so that means in the long run we have to have somewhere uh, a forest for mushrooms berries and herbs can we upgrade this workers we, would, we cannot upgrade right now oh it is building okay i don't know what was that uh icon over there it was strange uh, i thought we should have very good assigned workers Remember. but when children grow up, they're going to leave their parents' house and look around for a new place to live. It might happen that they don't find any home at all. We ought to build a shelter to be able to provide all inhabitants with a roof over their heads. I've already pointed out to you that it could become very dangerous if we were to run out of food at some point. Since a lot of people are going to be living in the new shelter, we ought to provide them with access to food in their vicinity. A hunting lodge can look for wildlife in the surrounding area to bring a little meat to the menu. Okay, and that's more uh, good variety at least. Hunting lodge.
What with this? Needs ruins. How about these scrap piles? It cannot. Okay, you ran out of wood. It's not a problem. What's that? Why do you leave wood there? Oh, because... Okay, so do we have... Uh, and I didn't put anybody here. So do we have uh, any ways, yeah, to increase uh, our storage capacity? Cemetery resources. Mine, tailor shop. No. So the only way to increase our storage if we upgrade uh, the town hall. Okay, and the hunting lodge has to be near a forest as well. Okay. Okay, let's uh, demolish it and let's use this to clear the scrap from here. Can I just stop the production? Yep, we can do that. This is the... No, it's not... Uh, I don't want to stop the hunting lodge. I want to stop this. The foresters lodge so they can collect the wood from here. There's a lot of wood here. What's with this one? Okay. You know what? Let's upgrade it. Go water tower. Whoa, it has a field of work. What? I guess they can collect dead people from that, that area. Charcoal kiln. Oh, we can filter it. And we can know the reasons. No. Auto save, please. So, oh, we can capture animals. Interesting. Uh, 
That means we can do some kind of animal farm. Oh, that's the pasture. Okay. Okay. So we can keep animals there. And we don't need to hunt. Let's choose another seed. It seems they are collecting. Perfect. The hunting lodge equally provides us directly with food, but it functions somewhat irregularly because it relies on wildlife in the surrounding area. Nevertheless, it can be indispensable during a drought because even the deer and wild boar still roam around the forest. However, wild animals can not only be shot, they can be captured too. When a wild animal has been captured, it can be brought to a pasture and served there as livestock. In order to capture wild animals, you have to instruct your hunter to do this. You also ought to set up a pasture and assign a herder. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're putting that right here. So they can smell the animals. build this I guess uh, it's because the tutorial that we cannot build freely Oh, so we have to capture them and then we can assign. Okay. Hmm, is this means that the filter is on? Yep. Okay, that's good to know. I like to see these uh, visual cues. So, do we have... no? Come on. Capture a few animals. I hope somebody will collect all these uh, wood here. So, have you captured some animal? Yeah. Okay, we need two of them. We will wait for that. Well, it's cool that uh, 
we are running out of sp what's what's with this this needs water and coal so we are running out of coal maybe that uh, this way we can make it consume more This is three deer. Animals captured by a hunter are brought to a pasture where they are tended to and cared for by herders. Some animals produce resources such as milk or eggs. Other animals can only be slaughtered to eat. You ought to find out for yourself which type of animal brings you which benefit. On each pasture, you can choose which type of animal ought to be kept there. Gee, I wonder what kind of animal laying an egg. You must provide water for the animals you keep on your pasture. This enables them to survive and reproduce. When enough animals are fully grown, the herder will start to slaughter them. If you don't want animals to be slaughtered, you can also instruct the herder not to do so. Now your herders know how they ought to handle the animals. And now that you've already captured several animals, don't forget to instruct your hunters to hunt animals again in the future so that they can continue to gather and provide food. With our increased production, our stockpile is going to run out soon. The supply routes for our production buildings are getting longer and longer too. To tackle these problems, you ought to build a temporary storeroom and have roads laid out. Okay, now that was my question. So go back for hunting. And we can... Water. Okay. Temporary stock. Oh, temporary storeroom. Okay. And we can build uh, warehouses. It's also good. Okay. And we can build dirt roads. Okay, let's see. It's probably not the best way to lay everything out. But I had no idea what to expect, so... build dirt road so are they building it or or what i think you know what we have a lot of people let's get more builder Increase your settlement's general storage capacity. Place them in a targeted manner in order to shorten the routes for goods between your production buildings. Roads are equally a great benefit, 
because settlers moving on roads can go distinctly faster than on a normal supporting surface. To improve the whole thing even further, we can build a market to improve logistics at the settlement. Besides being an enormous stockpile for resources that is even able to store water, the market is responsible for distributing resources within your settlement. What's more, it also increases your settler's confidence. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The, this is the place. That would be the place for the market. Right there. Well. Give everything for this, so come on, build it. Logisticians are able to amass resources from the whole settlement and bring them to the market. This improves the flow of your products and leads to your settlers having to walk shorter distances to fulfill their individual needs. The combination of these attributes makes the market the ideal building when you want to enlarge or even relocate your settlement. The larger your settlement gets, the farther some settlers have to travel to get to all of the food you produce. To make life a little easier for them, you can build a food station. Logisticians who work at the food station will collect food from your storage buildings and production facilities and bring it to the food station. Okay, so food station right there. Oh, it needs a lot of food. What's the problem? Ah, okay. You can collect everything you need. Okay. You have to use that again. Whoa! It became a nice forest. But there is a steel wood here. Let's put down a task and collect here. Hopefully they will put everything into this 
temporary stock. Oh, everybody is really, really happy. I think that's because the market or or this one. With the new food station, your settlers are now able to supply themselves with food directly on site. If your settlement is supposed to grow even further, you can think about whether you want to provide additional food stations. Distributing food at your settlement is going to prove to be extremely practical. However, your settlers not only need food to survive, they need water too. To be able to distribute water in a targeted manner, you can build a water point. Okay, this no, this again feels like uh, Caesar three. Logistic water point. Let's put a water point there. Let's quicken things. I don't think I have to fear any bad things. We have full medicine. Yeah. Now that your settlers also have a water point available, they can supply themselves with water and food. Similar to how it's done at the food stations, this enables you to precisely control at which places your settlers are able to attend to their needs. Since we have our logistics under control, now we can concern ourselves with the weather and its challenges. We can build a weather station to enable us to make a forecast regarding upcoming weather and learn if potentially contaminated rain might be coming our way. It can also be used to prepare our crops and rainwater collectors we might have against contaminated rain by covering them. Hmm, interesting. Oh, this is a big boy. Needs a lot of things. Very good. Now that we know what sort of weather awaits us and how we can protect ourselves against contaminated rain by covering our crops and rainwater collectors, we ought to attend to collecting the rain we want. Rain not only humidifies the soil, it can also be automatically collected via rainwater collectors to generate a steady flow of additional water. Since we've already built our weather station, we're able to decide what kind of circumstances would make us want to cover our rain collectors. Yeah, I can see that right there.
Let's put it here. Next to the better station. things up. And we don't need, yeah, we don't need workers here. Never forget that our settlers might get sick if we distribute water contaminated with radiation at our settlement, even if they're wearing protective clothing. We should make sure that the collected water is as purified as possible. We can have our crops covered to shield our seedlings against radiation. But once they've been covered, naturally they won't be irrigated with rain anymore. To rectify this problem, we can build an irrigation plant that is able to artificially regulate soil humidification. Place this building with care, because it is only going to irrigate the soil within its impact radius. Okay, I don't think... Okay. So we can place one here and another one there. Okay, we need a worker here. Fabulous. As long as our irrigation plant is supplied with filtered water, it is able to neutralize the possible contamination of the soil due to radiation. But watch out. When water contaminated with radiation is fed into the system, this can lead to precisely the opposite. And the irrigation plant itself may possibly cause radioactive pollution of its surrounding area. Along okay, that's nice. Rain, there are other environmental hazards, such as sandstorms or droughts. The soil dries out during a drought, and sandstorms sweep across the landscape from time to time. These sandstorms can damage your buildings and ultimately make them unfit for use. We ought to prepare for this and assign several more builders to enable potential damage to be repaired. You can decide which type of task your builders ought to give priority to at our town center. You can instruct them to merely repair buildings, to erect new buildings, or to do both at the same time. This enables you to react quickly in crisis situations. For instance, in the event of a sandstorm, you can quickly attend to having damaged buildings repaired. Now that we've taken care of all the necessary needs of our settlement, such as food, water, protective clothing and tools, our next efforts ought to focus on increasing the settlement's overall productivity. A research station allows us to develop different technologies. One step in moving our settlement ahead is to make it possible for our refiners to acquire electronics from scrap. We should perform research on the appropriate technology to achieve this and instruct one of our refiners to produce electronics. Okay. So we need a research uh, station. Community technology. Yeah. This is also a big one. But I think we are, we are good. Oh, okay. So that's what they are doing. Nice. Whoa, what? 
happening? Is this a oncoming sandstorm? Okay, at least it was quick. Well, on this speed, it's not. Uh, it's not that shocking. Okay, and how can? Oh, oh, wow! Resources. So we need a lot of stuff for this to research. Back to this. Uh, we need another recycler unit. Let's build that as well. Okay, and we'll have contaminated rain. And I would like to see how... Okay, this is covered, but the, the fields... Okay, that's covered. I don't see if this covered. Okay, we still need more scrap and more wood. We can collect wood from here for the research. We need a lot of scrap. Okay. back to here and we can assign more workers that means that uh, collecting uh, scrap yeah that will be a, a, a bottleneck because as we run out of scrap uh, at the territory we have to go further and further for it Let's put a task down here, gather scrap. Maybe they can gather some uh, of it, not the heavy ones, but the little ones. Yeah, they are collecting. Okay, research is is hard because it needs a lot of uh, uh, resources and also it will need time. Why don't we have the... We have to have it in stock. 
Oh, I thought they were bringing it here, or or do they? Oncoming sandstorm. Okay. Okay, this is just moves through the city. It's mu this is a much nicer sandstorm than in Surviving Mars. Okay. We have everything, so... Oh, I believe someone take... Maybe someone... Yeah, okay. I think someone grabbed the scrap, started to move here, but before it gets into, it cannot start the research. Okay, I think the filtration is active in this. Okay, now... I see I see what's happening here we have more and more uh, contaminated uh, uh, rain and that's how this uh, uh, this game can turn into really really hard Whoa! A few people have died. Can we upgrade that? Here we are halfway through. There will be a lot of stuff to think about. Why is no workforce here? We have to wait for this. Come on. Can we see the... We cannot see the uh, research tree unless we are researching, which is... I don't like uh, that kind of stuff. Because while the game is new, you cannot plan ahead. You cannot really see what to do next. And I know when we start researching, I can look at it. But I can easily forget uh, what's next. And also, uh, I usually tend to look uh, which... Oh, that's also a ring catcher or, or what? Okay, now we have the new technology. So... What? What? Is the recycler to produce electronics? Okay, why can't I do that? It's a recycler. How can I instruct him to produce electronics? We have to build a, another one.
What's the deal here? Okay, let's remove this building and build another one. Or did I research the wrong technology? Oh yes, we researched the refinery. Damn it. Electricity, electronics, okay. Oh, we can open the research window at any time. All right. Okay, so that was the problem. We researched the wrong technology. Well, at least we have that. And now we have enough wood and scraps to start this quickly, hopefully. Okay, so that's the easiest route. I see you. built it let's put someone uh, working there and when this finish the research okay we can we can demolish that point I don't really feel that we are storing additional resources. Okay. Very good. With this new research station and the ability to acquire electronics from scrap, we can provide our settlement with all the materials we need. The research station is very useful in enabling us to adapt ourselves to our surroundings by using the right technologies in any situation. Down in the end zone, we dealt with the concept of a solar collector. This solar collector is able to collect sunlight and convert it into electricity. We wanted to try out whether our idea works and build a solar collector. Okay. Technology, no electricity, solar collector. Whoa, 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 that's a little bit big, but fine. And I think we should research some... Oh, we just get that technology, that's nice. Utensils. Oh, we need Okay, so the expedition will be needed for that. Can we? Is there one other technology that. Oh! It's the mouse wheel. Oh, there's a scroll bar. Okay.
immunity. Let us go on a further than medical increases by pressing this prevents the outbreak of new diseases. Defense strategy, this technology unlocks the building watch to the ammunition factory and mine along with the product of sulfur. This technology is set for defending against raiders. Okay, but I think we will we'll get the rats uh, research the immunity while we are building this solar collector. produces energy by capturing sunlight and feeding this energy into a grid. The solar collector also gives us all the relevant information we need to keep an eye on our settlement's power consumption. Okay, so this is the main hub. Some sort. Each of your buildings automatically hook up to this power grid when you set up an electric power pole within the building's range. Buildings supplied with electricity work distinctly, more effectively, and produce faster as a result. What's more, housing supplied with electricity increases the confidence of the settlers who use it. Okay, let's build one. Put one there. Productivity, so put one there. Now let's see. And I want to know if this will block the roads. Oh, okay. Wow. And I wonder if we build those. Hmm. Is not connected. How? Oh, we are just building it. Okay. I thought from the overlay that it was already built. This one is built and people can walk uh, by it, so that's good. Okay, how can I... How can I connect the buildings to the power source? Should be automatically connect to this, right? It's not hooked up to a power grid. Okay, how can I hook it up? Or it has to be fully inside. But this is fully inside and this is still not hooked up to a power grid. Okay, what am I missing here? These guys are hooked up. But there is no power over there. So... Oh, there are specific points! 
and I have to be on the grid. Like this. No, I don't want to do that. And let's build another one here then. Okay, I want to select this one. And let's... Okay, that's it. Because that hooks up to that post, okay. And... From there, we can put one more there. And... One there, and one more there. Okay, now this should uh, move electricity all around. Let's see. Okay, yeah, because they're building these faster because they are closer to the resources. Okay, we have that one. Fantastic. I can only picture how our ancestors must have felt with their almost infinite supply of energy. However, you ought to constantly keep an eye on your power consumption to avoid outages. Logically, the solar collector is only able to produce energy during the daytime. It would be beneficial if we could also make electricity available at night so that our settlement remains effective. It's clear that we currently work slower at night. So let's try to store the surplus energy we produce during the daytime to enable it to be used at night. Oh, okay. Put a battery there. Producing more than we need. Sandstorm, great. That looks good. Some buildings are now connected to the power grid. Although a well-structured settlement that's hooked up to the power grid consumes a certain amount of resources, it is enormously effective. Oh, and just as an aside, you can have electric power poles put up on many surfaces, even on roads. Okay, that's good to With know. With the settlement producing on a stable scale, we can now focus on exploring our surroundings. Though we heard a bunch of stories in the end zone, now we can explore the ruins our ancestors left behind firsthand to find treasure and resources. Let's build an expedition station. Okay, what's that? Expedition ration. Hmm. Whoa! Okay, we have to do some cleanup. Uh, 
and we cannot do decorations. The radiation removed. settlers to be scouts and prepare expedition rations. When you want to send off an expedition, you can decide the quantity of expedition rations with which to supply the expedition. As a result, you can control how long and how thoroughly it is able to explore a ruin. Okay. Let's send out a few scouts to find a ruin. The scout will visit the ruin you have designated and explore it. As a result, the scout will supply us with important information about the site that we should pay attention to when we start an expedition. Okay. So, where are the scouts? Scout. Okay. We have scouts. Okay, expedition window and Okay, let's send the scout. Oh, we have different interesting locations. Then let's go to the nearby. Can we see them moving? Our scout has returned and brought along a variety of useful information. Now that we know what we have to reckon with, we can put together a team in order to explore the ruin more precisely. Each ruin has its own challenges, secrets, and valuable resources. Choose settlers who fulfill the necessary prerequisites for the respective ruin and give them enough expedition rations to take along. In addition, don't forget to equip them with protective clothing and tools to the best of your ability before you send them off. Okay. okay let's configure the expedition. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's a necessary accessory for the expedition. I can see that. you've commissioned the expedition it's now in preparation stage expedition rations and other necessary resources are being amassed afterwards the settlers you selected will relinquish their old tasks assemble equip themselves and subsequently set off together on their way get yourself ready to make tough decisions good news your expedition has finally reached its destination now it's all up to you. Contact them and listen to what they have to say to you. Make wise decisions and guide the settlers through the ruin with meticulous care. Okay, let's do this.
Okay, how do we do that? Okay, I guess we are we are here. So open expedition window. Maybe, maybe we can go here. Open expedition window. I don't want to cancel it. How can I lead? Good news. Your expedition has finally... Okay. But how can I guide them? Missing here. Okay. Builder badge, hunter badge. Okay, but uh, Or they didn't arrive, or what? How can I lead the expedition? Oh, I have to wait until they reach it. The expedition is traveling, okay. Ah. Here they are, they are. Okay, now we can instruct them. These are the tough decisions. Loot and return. Well done. Your decisions during an expedition are decisive for its success. Try to be as well prepared as possible and make wise decisions because the consequences could be fatal. Now let's loot this place and get out of here. Take as many resources as your settlers can carry and bring them back to your settlement. Now that you know how you can help your settlers to manage in this environment so hostile to life, I'd like to show you how you can design your settlement in such a way so that your settlers are not only able to survive in it, they're actually glad to be here as well. Your settlers are eager to live in surroundings that please them. For instance, they'd rather not live next to a building that produces lots of noise or dirty grime. Yeah, you can switch Caesar to the heat map of dwellings' attractiveness to be able to see just how attractive the dwellings in your settlement are. In this view, you see which cabins and shelters have been placed in attractive surroundings and which ones are in unattractive surroundings. 
If you want to make your settlers particularly happy, you should pay attention to providing them with attractive surroundings. To increase the attractiveness of a residential area, you can put up some decorations to beautify your settlement. Each decoration increases the attractiveness of the area where it has been placed. Okay, let's... I want to scrap the them. And that should improve a few things around here. We need to place five decorations. Okay. Okay, it is increased. Let's put a flag there. And another one there, why not? To like the newly built decorations. This way, you can even manage to design a residential area attractively that's located near industrial buildings. And with sufficient time and energy, even create a settlement where all your settlers are glad to live in it. Although living in a pretty neighborhood isn't the only thing that interests your settlers, they want you to take care of their other needs as well. If you provide them with a forum, they'll make their wishes and request known to you. You can find out what means a lot to them there. Okay, we will go with the forum. Not a decoration. Unity, forum. Yeah, we can squeeze that there. But we will build that only in the next episode guys i hope you like this one if you do please consider to give the video a like and subscribe i know there's nothing much happening because this is still a tutorial but i want to go through it maybe if you are watching this later then you can skip ahead when i start some scenarios and i'm through with learning but i think this game is quite mouthful. But anyway, I see you in the next one. Bye.